All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna call the meeting to order in attendance here is myself, uh, town manager, John Burt. We also have the public works director, uh, Greg Hanover, as well as Jeannie Veslowski. So um, the first order business is the approval of the minutes from our October meeting. We did not have a December meeting. So there's a motion made to approve, I'll second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye, so it's the meeting minutes have been approved. Under public communications, 2021-106, uh, correspondence from Mr. Will Getz concerning speeding in the air of Pearl Street and Grove Street and Mystic. And I spoke to Mr. Getz on the phone and told him I was gonna ask an officer to run some traffic counts. Um, it looks like he might be in the middle of running them, but I'd have to contact Officer Brower to see if he's completed them. Um, Mr. Goats felt like by the time people pass all of the cars parked on Pearl Street close to the West Main, they kind of go crazy in his area. They kind of speed up. Okay. And that, that was a, the result of a letter that went to the town manager's office. Um, I don't know, are you, are you able to hear all of us or is it kind of difficult hearing us? Uh -oh. I can hear everyone. You can? Okay. Yep. Great. All right, so um, we have- One of them that you and I drove past. That's right. We checked this. That's right. Um, you know, the correspondence, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll be brief. Uh, I'm writing to request the town take steps necessary to prevent vehicles on Pearl and Grove from exceeding 15 miles per hour. The current posted speed limit is 25 and people often drive considerably faster when the road is reduced to a single lane by parked vehicles. I'm sure that you're aware of the car that missed the stop sign and a turn on Pearl Street and ended up in the Mystic River last year. My wife, Whitney, and I live at the corner of Pearl and Grove. There's constant foot traffic on these roads all times a year, including joggers, families, and young children, elderly people, groups of teens, and dozens of dog walkers. If not addressed, the combination of tight traffic lanes, unsafe speeds, and pedestrians is, unlikely, is likely to result in an injury or worse. Please let me know what steps need to be um, are needed to move forward with reducing the posted speed limit and having the humps installed on both roads. If signatures are required, I'm confident I can enlist my neighbors. Um, to speak to a little bit of this, we, we have... Uh, received requests in the past about speed humps. Um, we have not gone with speed humps uh, under any recent uh, uh, requests, uh, certainly as long as I've been here for a variety of reasons. Number one, they're not good uh, for traffic. They're not intended for a traffic control measure. Second, there is some uh, problems that exist uh, certainly for public works when it comes to plowing. Um, I don't I, I don't think we have the necessary data though right now since the speed study was not conducted or has not been completed yet. So I would suggest that we might table that until we do have that data. Any, agree, and the town manager agrees. Uh, uh, Greg, any thoughts on it? Any comments? No? Uh, no. Okay. So we're gonna table that item until the next meeting and hopefully we'll have that data back and we can make a more informed decision. Uh, the second item, is some correspondence received from Nora Andrews concerning speeding on Groton Long Point Road of preaching Esther Point. I didn't really do anything with this because we're working on Groton Long Point Road speeding issues. So right. I kind of right. lumped them all together. Okay. Great, you have the paperwork? So we'll go to request. Okay. So I, and it's requested to change it to what? 35 miles an hour. Okay. What is it? It's currently 40. Okay. Um, I make a motion to uh, approve the paperwork to request the state change the uh, speed limit down to, to reduce it to 35 miles per hour. I'll, I'll second that. And then if you guys can make, can, I get a copy, but can you make sure Chris Conley and Joe Delacruz and Heather get a copy so they can help us share it? We'll do. Now, I, on January 11th, sent a request. We saw that. We actually have to do a form. We do still have yeah. to do a form. Okay. Yeah. So for, for the record, um, for those of you on the on the call, what that is, is we, we need to provide a form to the state. We have previously sent some correspondence to the state of Connecticut Department of Transportation regarding the concerns that have been voiced to us. Uh, since it's a state road, the state has jurisdiction over it. There is a form that we can uh, send to them to have them take a look at this uh, and recommend their consideration. And, and the town manager just made a motion that we would do that. 
I second it. So we're going to forward that request. Uh, again, we have sent previous correspondence, but this will formalize it. Uh, third piece of public communications is um, correspondence from David Warren concerning speeding on Ward Avenue and Noank between the Trading Bridge and Main Street. Jeannie, uh, we also uh, we drove this as well. It seems like I think he's talking about the area adjacent to the fire department in that park, that short span of road. We were out there on a Thursday afternoon a couple weeks ago. There were some kids playing in the park. Um, I can't tell you for sure, um, but I, I think it's nearby. Yeah, we, we did take a ride through there. But, you know, we. There was nothing that really jumped out at us uh, at the time when, when myself and, and Jeannie Veslowski took a ride through there. Um, of course, there is track. There's currently construction going on on the on the bridge. Um, again, there's a request from Mr. Warren for speed bumps. Um, Colin, I know you've had some. We've had discussions with you about speed bumps, and just again for the for the record, uh, the official position is that they're not a traffic control device. Am I right? Um, yeah, we haven't put them in in years. Um, there, there are I mean, some that are that were kind of grandfathered that have been there for decades, right? Yes. Yep. Um, we do have some in town that have been there for quite some time. But I, again, I know during my tenure on the traffic authority uh, and prior to that, there was uh, these requests that were received with regularity and. and uh, I think all of them were, were were not acted upon because of some of the other reasons that we've already mentioned. Um, all right. Yep. Just from my initial assessment, I don't know if there's any other thoughts, but you know, again, when we went out there and took a look at it that day, I don't have any record of a lot of traffic accidents in that area. Yes, there is a park right there, but I, I think. You know, the preliminary assessment, at least in my mind, was that there wasn't anything immediately apparent that we needed to do. It's a live yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have an officer just being out there a couple of times to yep. sort of monitor see if there's things. We, we'll assign an officer to monitor that and take a look at obviously under under better better weather conditions than we're having today. Um, the next item, 21-109, is correspondence from Matt McCormick expressing concerns with the Casino Road sightline in our agenda packets. Um, you can see a photo. I don't know if you guys got the uh, uh, on the on the call if you guys got the agenda packets, but there's a picture of what it looks like. Um, we did go out and look at that. You do need to kind of you have to kind of approach that intersection when you're when you're coming from what would be I think the north, uh, and have to actually almost get out into the intersection to see traffic coming from your left hand side, which would be towards the river. Um, I think, you know, based on what I saw, I didn't think this was an unreasonable request um, just to install a stop sign there. Yeah, I think so. Um, public works, we did go out and uh, measure the uh, sight line from our standard 10 foot off the better line. And this is actually what pictured here. Okay. You're looking at a building, and it's like a 74 foot sight distance, which is well below our standards. So we would recommend. This becomes a three-way stop. Okay. So public works recommends that it becomes a three-way stop. Um, I can make that in the form of a motion. If, if you're good with that, John. Yep, that's good. And second, and all in favor? Aye. All right. So that passes. We're gonna uh, public works will task them with uh, installing the the proper signage there. And the last uh, piece of correspondence is 21-110 correspondence from Dan O'Connell concerning crosswalks with warning lights at Route 1 and Flanders Road, Route 215 at Brook Street. Um, again, uh, uh, go to the correspondence. Jeannie, any uh, hit the highlights on that? No, I did not reach out to him. Okay. Um, I, I know you were familiar with the yep. request. Yeah, I, I could speak to this a little bit, just having um, on my my off-duty time gone through that area. Uh, 
this obviously since they're state roads we would have to recommend this to the state um i am familiar with the area of of uh route one at flanders road there is a crossing there that comes out of um haley uh, i'm sorry from um um merit property across the street uh and and as they indicate in the letter they go to sheep farm which is on flanders road there are two crossings there that people use with regularity i've used them myself um I certainly appreciate what they're saying there as far as getting a crosswalk. Um, the most we can do is um, make this recommendation to the state for their consideration. Um, the one on two four, the one at two fifteen that connects Mortimer Wright Preserve with the Haley Farm property. I, I believe I'm familiar with that as well. It's a similar situation where people that are doing hiking and biking uh, do use that to cross the road. Um, my recommendation would to I'll move that. All right. Motion made by uh, town manager. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. So we'll we'll refer that as well. That completes the public communications under old business. Uh, an update on the Groton Long Point Road speeding concerns. Uh, we talked about this yeah. a little bit, but I don't know if John, if you have any additional comments. Or... I don't think so. I think we've taken care of what we can do now. Yeah. And but I, like, yeah, stay on it. See what can be done. Yep. All right. So as we uh, commented before, we're going to forward that to the state for their consideration. Uh, I think we're still looking at the bike lanes. Yeah, we, we did go out. To, uh, we did go out and look at the bike lanes. I don't know, Cole, if you want to speak to that, uh, we're looking at potentially requesting the call it double wide shoulder uh, separation, uh, two foot wide, so that we can kind of visually slow people down, uh, keep them from crossing over the, the white lines and pass other people, and uh, provide more of a separation between uh, bicycles and, and vehicles. But we have certainly have enough room there. Is that the town's obligation or does the state? You know, the town would have to do this. Okay. Um, you know, we've paid the bike symbols in the shoulder and they also provide this uh, two foot wide Painted uh, shoulder lines. Okay. Um, the action must pass the or not. The did you already just pass it? Just in case it's going to be asked, but let's yeah. do it just in okay. case. I'll move. Uh, I'll second that. Yeah. All right. So we will we'll put a plan together and put that into the state for a permit. Okay. Perfect. 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 Passed. I think Colin was talking about the flashing lights at the crosswalks. That yeah. that could cause a lot of money when you've got a. Well, that's if you're done with the shoulder. That was the next thing. It's, in fact, uh, I don't know. This was a letter we got from DOT actually a couple weeks ago. It was a copy to the traffic authority for a program to install these rapid flashing beacons at town crosswalks. Yeah. Um, so I recommend that we request the state look at the crosswalk at Elm Street and also on Esca Point Beach, over town. I, um, town crosswalks. Um, I see, I, I'm sorry, I see someone had raised their hand. Uh, if you could just put something in the chat, that would be helpful to me. I, I'm not sure who was, if someone had a question. Um, Sharon D'Amato, you had a question. Uh, let me see if I can figure out how to get you to be able to talk. <clears throat> Sharon, uh, you had a question. Please, please go ahead. You can unmute yourself. I think you should be able to talk now. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, when we heard about just now, heard about the 35 mile an hour speed limit. Thank you. We can't thank you enough. Um, is there anything that we need more to do? on the resident side? Well, we're going to copy our legislators. So, you know, if you want to touch base again with Chris Conley and them, and it's okay. helpful, I'll actually, uh, how quickly do you think that'll go to them? Um, we've sent most of the material to them. I think it's just a matter of forward in the form. To Chris, I want to get a copy of Chris Joe. And yeah, once, right once uh, so once we get this formalized, uh, which will probably certainly be within the week, uh, then we can send that, we'll send that to, um, uh, Chris Conley and Joe Delacruz. I know that they they will copy on some of this for their for their information, just to know where it stands. Um, 
Other is, than that, I'm sorry, go that, ahead. Is that actually, is that an actual request to say we need this? It is. Because... Yeah, it's, it's a formal request from the town uh, to the Department of Transportation. There's a there's a format that we have to follow, um, but that will be the formal request. And then it's then it's within their purview to take action. Wonderful. OK, thank you very much. Right. And I also heard about the beacons. Those would also be for the Brook, Brook Street and South Elm as well. Oh, we would have to, that is a state crosswalk, so we'd have to ask the state to put those in, and then they would have to do it on their, uh, you know, under their funding and also maintain those. The program I'm referring to is specifically for town crosswalks, which is the one further down at Elm Street and Drummond Point, and also Esco Point Beach. Okay. Okay, so that would be just the Brook Street one would have to do with what they're talking about for connecting the trails that would go in with that probably. We could do the same request at that time now. Yeah, were you able to hear that? Yes. Okay. So thank you. Thank you all so very much. Um, well, you have no idea how happy people are going to be that this is starting to go forward. Good, good. Well, ho hopefully it will. Uh, hopefully the process will work quickly. I. I we can't make any assertions for how the state does things, but you know we'll certainly stay on top of it. I understand. I did talk to, just really quickly, I know you're busy. I did talk to the Connecticut DOT engineering department and um, they did, you know, I asked why would they turn this down, this request down? And they said, really, if the LTA is requesting it and has strong you know, concerns about things, they would normally put it through unless it caused some other kind of problems, such as you know making traffic go out onto other arteries, you know, like a Brook Street or or whatever. Sure. Um, and obviously, that wouldn't be the case here. Yeah, I'm sure they'll do their analysis. They'll take the information that we sent them, and um, you know, hopefully, the, their action will be quick. Okay. Thank you again. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there are there any other questions on Groton Long Point Road? I know there's some other folks on the call. If you would just uh, just um, Put something in the chat and then I can unmute you. Uh, not seeing any, then we'll uh, we'll move on. Thank you. I know several of you uh, attended because you're concerned about Grot Long Point Road. I hope that answers all your questions. Um, under new business, 2020-858, uh, request to install video monitoring signage on existing town signs on Cedar Road. In the packets, it's a, I think they already have the signs. Um, and then the two signs they're looking to install it. It's written, the sign says security alert, 24 hour video surveillance, all activities are monitored and recorded. And they, they wanna put one on the street sign and there's a turn signal sign. They'd like to put those signs on some two town signs. I looked through cases going back to January 1st, 2020. And I do know that the purpose is to kind of dissuade people from going down Cedar Road and committing crimes. Um, I went through that January 1st, 2020 to recently, December, uh, February 16th. Back in 2020, they did have a total of five car breaks. Um, one was on March 4, uh, May 14th, and then there were four that occurred on July 10th. Um, there haven't been any since then. It does look like our officers regularly go out there and perform patrol checks. Um, 48, I think, means all good. Um, but yes, there, it does. in 2020, they did have a total of five car breaks. So the request, uh, as, I, as I read it, is for these security signs to be posted on town signs. Yes. Um, I. I I'm going to defer to Greg on this, but I think that in the past we've been reluctant to have anybody affix non-town or or or. Um, Except for Hitler. Well, it's, uh, maybe Colin can respond, but I think it's strongly recommended not to install non-regulatory signs under the NUTCD. Yeah, it's not an LT. It's not an LTA sign. It's certainly not an STC sign. But um, yeah, if, if, if they want to put this up on their own post within the right away. Yeah, uh, I don't know that we have anyone on here from I that. I was only talking to a Will Farquhar about it. 
I don't do a motion to allow public works to work with the or just my my only i mean i don't know if this would provide people the false sense of security i don't know what there is for monitoring out there that's certainly nothing that we have any sure. anything to do with um colin do you have any comments are you just frozen colin i don't see it you I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned this, but typically the uh, MUTCD does not um, not like to have non-speed control or traffic signs mounted on, you know, something like this. So I, I would say they should not be mounted on the town signs, but if they wanted, you know, their own sign, they could always go through that process. Okay, I think that was the conclusion that we kind of reached as well. I don't know if you caught any of that, but that's what uh, what Greg had mentioned that, you know, public works could contact them and and if they were if they wanted to put their own signs up, maybe maybe work it out with them. Is that right? Okay. All right. Um, do we need to make that in the form of a motion? No. Okay. They have a process in place already. Yeah. All right. Um, the next, uh, under other items, the approval of the 2021 regular meeting schedule. Uh, we were unable to do that prior to the start of the year, but we're on the same pace uh, bi monthly. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. We're... The second item on here is 2020 859 request for town interest in Route 1 feasibility assessment of the Route 1 road diet. I know we have some folks from um, uh, from OPDS, John Reiner and Deb Jones. I, I, I'll invite you if you have any comments to make on that to please uh, do that now. Sure, uh, thank you everyone for having us and uh, putting this item on your agenda. Uh, I think the short answer is yes, please. This is something that we would love to see we as at the staff level and the Planning and Zoning Commission have been talking for some time about looking at the Route 1 corridor and some different traffic flow options. I think having the state do this type of an assessment, thinking about complete streets and bikeability, walkability would be a really good thing for that corridor from a, a health, and state, health and safety perspective, but also these types of uh, Relooks at the corridor and then the investment that then happens afterwards from the state on these types of projects really helps spur a lot of redevelopment. So uh, I think it's something at a minimum, we should have them do the assessment, maybe ask them to, in fact, maybe expand the, the reach of what they're looking a little bit in the area. Yeah, I think I, it would go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Either one of you, I, I just had a question. I know that uh, we had spoken about it. What, what exactly is a road diet? So first you got to cut out the carbs. That's really the, the um, so a road diet looks at um, really, it, it very much goes along with something also called complete streets, which the council actually had uh, asked us and uh, John Burt to look at uh, a complete streets policy for the town, looking at all users. So it's not just a, uh, a roadway made for the automobile, but also bicyclists, as well as uh, pedestrians and a road diet is often looking at um, the amount of pavement that you have and what all that pavement is used for, how many lanes, the speeds that are on the road. And is there a way of doing different treatments, whether it's landscaping, um, lessening the amount of uh, lanes and turning lanes and putting landscaped islands. There's a lot of options, but really to slow people down and making it safer for automobilists as well as um, pedestrians and bikers, bikes, bicyclists. Yeah, that's a tongue tire. Uh, people riding bikes. You don't know anything about it, do you? I don't. I don't. Okay. So uh, the town I live in, they actually just did a road diet, complete street uh, for a section that is very similar to our Route One uh, in you know kind of the downtown Groton area. And it looks great and it has slowed people down. So when you slow people down in those corridors, then, I mean, as you know, a car accident at 20 miles an hour has a lot less devastation than one at 35 or 40 miles an hour. So it, you know, it's, it's a small section of area, but they look at it mostly in areas where there are other users of the road other than the car. 
and how can they start eliminating some of those conflict points and um, make it um, better for everybody. I don't know, Deb, if you want to kind of weigh in on, is that a good enough description on a road diet? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, you know, initially the philosophy for the roads were to get people through as quick as possible, as fast as possible. Um, so when you slow them down, it actually increases economic development because you have the opportunity to, you know, see what's available there and, and get into some of these shops. Um, something else we had talked about was actually lengthening the area of the study down to Laurelwood. That gets us past the big Y plaza, because right now I think they're proposing to stop at the Quantic Road. Um, and that the big Y plaza area is, you know, something that we targeted in um, the PIF master plan. Yeah. And I just want to note that this is not a commitment by the town. It is mm -hmm. just, you know, let's look at it and then, and then it's the preliminary step. So we're not committing to anything here. Deb, yeah. could I, I can I ask you a favor? Um, I did get correspondence as recently as yesterday from the state on this topic. If you want to see modifications, if you guys could send me an email on exactly what those modifications are, and I will forward that in my response on behalf of the traffic authority that that um, we concur and that we would like to see this, but would they would consider making those adjustments? Great, certainly will. Okay, good. And you know, I just quickly pulled something up on Google about road diets, and you know. They are a little controversial because I think people don't understand them always at first. But as far as you know, traffic engineers and others are concerned, they work and they reduce crashes. And that's one of the biggest pushes behind them is reducing crashes and conflicts. Okay. Um, th any any more comments on this? I would. Add, I I think the town manager is prepared to make a motion on on the issue. So I'm just curious. Um. Will there only be one travel lane or is it still two travel lanes? But if there's a bicycle list, a car doesn't like, are we losing a lane? I, I think the yet? short, yeah, yeah. The shorter answer is we don't know. Each road diet is a little bit different. Um, sometimes what happens is you have one main travel lane and then you have the, the turning lanes are much more defined. And some of those come with hardscaping meaning landscaping or other things or bump outs that direct people to the appropriate areas to turn and the, you know, travel people are still going at a, a good flow through, but then there's a, a clearer delineation for where the turnoffs are, but everyone is different in how it's looked at. All right. Thank you. Any, any other comments? I think they're doing it on, um, did they do it on clearance C sharp? I know there was a public hearing about it um, in October. No, well, I think. But I don't think I. Not that I'm aware of. Um, and I don't know if that would be on a, a road diet or if that was just another construction project. Yeah, because I, I think that extended from the limited access highway part. I think that I don't. Yeah, which usually you don't do a road diet on a limited access highway. Um, I can also tell you that, yeah, but I, I don't know. I'm not enough. I'm not familiar enough with it. Yeah, Route 349 Eastern Point Road. Yeah. Yeah, the oh, state. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember. Yeah, they're still talking about it. They're, they took testimony on it. There's some conflicting opinions. That's it. the because, okay. because of people coming in and out of. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, like, I, I think on this topic, I, uh, I believe we're ready to. Yeah, I, I move to recommend to the state to do the study with the additions of uh, those areas that are requested by the uh, planning department. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, that Thank will, you. That passes as well. Great, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Uh, the last uh, item of business is 2020 860, which is request for comments on proposed Gold Star Highway Shoeville Road traffic control sign the signal improvements. I included the map, but <laughs> um, I don't have anything to add about this one. <laughs> no, I'm like, holy smokes. Yeah, th this is a bit, <clears throat> this is a bit complicated. Uh, if anybody cares to, to figure that out, please, by all means. Um, I don't. I think it's just like they've been updating all of the intersections. Yeah, public works, we reviewed the plans and we have no comment. Uh, okay. The town manager did sign a letter saying that we're putting the preemption system at the request of. On a bridge, right? Is that the one? No, uh, actually, Chapman's not. 
Oh yes, and I think it, yeah, I think he did it on behalf. That's right. On behalf of the fire yep. department. Yep. Oh, yep. John signed that. Since everyone, yeah. No replies necessary. It says so. Okay. Um, so no action will be taken on that. It sounds like the state is is moving forward with it, but um, there's no other items on the agenda. Does anyone else have anything? Right, you're good. I'm good. Um, I'd certainly uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. So move. move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for uh, your participation and attendance. All right. Enjoy the snow.